Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Doxy Moxie and today we're going to be looking at a brand new game that's finally out. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see that I've covered it a couple of times because I've been really excited to play it. And that game is Bandletail. So I've played the first couple of hours, so I'm able to give you a little guide and some starting tips that I honestly needed myself. If you're unfamiliar with Bandletail, it's a really cute game that's about cozy vibes. It centers on yordles. If you've played League of Legends, you'll know what yordles are. And it has a story that's full of so much warmth. The game takes you to Bandle City, a place that's vibrant and whimsical where yordles come from. You'll play as a shy yordle who's just finished an apprenticeship and comes from Yarnville, an island that loves knitting. Once you're ready to explore Bandle City and its magical portals, you end up at a party with your best friend, Clover, where things suddenly go south. The portals stop working right, throwing everything into chaos, and that's where your adventure to fix everything starts. There are a few settings when you first start the game, including language. Once you're in the game, you'll make your yordle. Feel free to make your yordle look however you want, as you can easily change your appearance at any time once you start the game. The choices are really sweet with different ears, fur colours, hair and even a trail for when your yordle sprints. One of the first things you should be doing when you start the game is gathering. Anytime you see gatherables, gather them. You'll need resources early on and the cooldown is quite short so it's always worth gathering when you can, especially yarn as you'll need lots of it. This leads to your emotional orbs. Whenever you do things in the game like gathering, your emotion gauge fills up. Once they're filled up, you can dream and this gives you points for your skill tree. I think this is a really cool mechanic and it's nice that the skill tree is really in depth. Once you unlock it, you'll need to do them in order. You can't just skip through to the end, so you'll have to unlock them in order. Once you're able to look at your skill tree and start exploring and talking to different residents, you'll see that your skill tree has different tabs. Do not neglect this. I actually didn't check for a while, so I had lots I could unlock and I didn't realise they'd been more than one tab. I was just focusing on the knitting one, but there are other ones so you can have badges for different tabs. One major tip about the game is the map. It is extremely confusing. My goodness, I was stuck for so long and wasted so much time trying to find Gramps' house, which looks like you need to portal or fly over to the area, right? Nope, I'm just going to show you where it is. It's literally near the big main green area of the city. Just go up and veer to the left. Um, it's there when you open the map when you're on it, but it looks like it's in a different area. This is super frustrating trying to navigate through the city while looking at the map. At the start, you had a little marker, but it just disappeared. So it would have been really helpful because it can be a struggle trying to find certain locations. The crafting is really fun. And as I mentioned before, make sure you gather when the nodes are available. Also check the chests around town and inside houses for some extra goodies. Right at the start, I found it beneficial to always have rope on hand in case you need to fix a bridge area. When you repair the bridges, it comes up with knit stitches. It's so, so cute. Once you're able to clean, you'll get resources that can be upcycled for materials which you'll need quite early on, so you can always clean any trash you see. You can move your home. You'll need to progress the game and quest to be able to pack it up, but you'll be able to open it out wherever you see the little yellow house icon. This is a really cool feature. I think this is really nice. After unlocking the ability to move your house, make sure you enable the carpets. I have the cooking carpet, a carpet is basically a layout for that specific skill. For the cooking carpet, you can craft the machines you need and you can also invite your doors to come and eat yummy meals that you make, including lots of beets. Because your doors love beets. Personally, I don't like beets, but I mean, I'm just cooking, so I don't have to eat it. It can be a little fast paced as the food is on a countdown. You need to make sure that the oven is hot and powered up, then you can cook. If your food expires, you'll have to feed it to your friendly plant. If you want to make sure that the oven is always available for use, you'll need to unlock your skill tree and make sure you're able to craft traps for fireflies. 
The wait time to catch one is five minutes, but you can always go to sleep and leave them and collect them in the morning. I'd say it's worth crafting about three traps. You do get them back, but it's just a way to have multiple going on at once. Once you are further into the story, I'd say about three hours maybe, as I'm taking off time it took for me to find Gramps' house, you'll be able to travel via the portals. At first it will cost portal yarn, but once your portals are stabilised it will be free. There is still so so much in the game to explore, uh, things that I've not even reached yet, but hopefully these tips will help you in your first couple of hours if you've started, if you're about to start or if you're not that far into the game. Overall, I've been enjoying it and I actually want to get back on it now, but I feel like not a lot is explained in the game. You do get some pop-ups, but it can still be really confusing. Like I'll have a pop-up and then it will explain what to do, but then I still don't get it. So hopefully these tips might help you if you're a little lost. Um, I'm hoping they do help because if I had help when I first started, I wouldn't have wasted so much time. I purchased the deluxe edition of the game, however, at about four hours in, I have still not been able to find the items that it came with. If you figured that out, please let me know where to find them. Hopefully this will be the first of many guides for Bandletail so we can all learn together. Does Bandletail seem like something you'd like to play? If it is or isn't, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have an amazing week ahead. Take care. Bye.